Arnold Stanley, and then I think the lead was um, W.G. Williams uh, at that hearing, and indicated that the the road uh, both as interrupted and also in a huge with the with the calls act is also built to the internal radius that would accommodate the largest use of the prior gas. Um, so uh, the uh, the other concern that the 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 group has you know, where exactly are we in relation to uh, what you can see on the street? Just point out um, when you look at the street, you know this is only the area that's visible. There is a you know, the 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 now. The the, the, the the first house is uh, probably at the back of the um, the 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 house so street. This is uh, one hundred feet away from the street. Four the first edge of the home is four hundred feet away from the street. So it's very far on the list. And right now, this is all um, uh, asphalt, paved surface. That's all being removed and then graded. Um, so, so this vegetation is going to grow up and the trees to kind of fill in that area. Um, so, uh, that's what I have to have right now. And as you said, there's a couple of questions. Is it start with the rest of the experience that you have? It's best for you. I'll pass away. But don't you want to say anything now? Okay. All right. So, who's got questions? Okay. I'll be over. Hi, my name is Jim Lossman. I live at 719 Street. So, I'm Diane and Ross from the property. Um, so, I have a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned something about. Uh, the training radius of the fire trucks. So one of the first proposals we saw a couple of years ago, um, that training radius was described as from the fire department that the ladder trucks would actually go across one of the homeowner's properties uh, because the training radius wasn't able to be in the truck. And in that, on those days, they showed that the fire truck they would come to the for the two first two properties there was a cul-de-sac for that truck to turn around. I don't see that on this current plan. So that fire truck would, would have to turn around the turn around on this plan? Okay. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I, I just wonder why that is limited from the last plan. The last plan accommodated the Brockton fire trucks to be able to return based upon when you're getting the East Bridgewater, you're narrowing the road down, whereas you're not conforming to the Brockton standards, so the fire truck then would have to deal with if there's a hot car on that road. So that's why the fire department had concerns about having a color set on the rock side so they could easily turn their trucks around and emergency vehicles and get them out. Uh, I don't know what East Bridge wanted to say about the narrow road and how they get the road, but I don't know what the municipal agreements would be and who would respond. I know that if East Bridge had to respond to a 911 call, it's quite a distance to get to this road. So I don't know, do you have plans on, on who actually responds to the 911 call? So that was, so Chief Williams actually uh, addressed this. Thank you. So Chief Williams actually addressed this at the last planning meeting. And his point was, you know, there's a fire in East Bridgewater where Brockton's coming. Much like there's a, a fire in, uh, in Brockton that runs East Bridgewater, East Bridgewater is come and respond to that fire as well. So this fire is going to be kept in the water. So there won't be a rock that won't build on this, on this river. Uh, that being said, the turning radius at the end of the road will pull this act more than equal for any piece of rock that's driven to, to make a full turn uh, at the back end of the project. It would, of course, require them to pull into these bridge water to do so. Um, but you know, if they're there, they respond to them into these bridge water. Does that address your question, Zia? I, I, mean, I just wanted to say, I do not have any concerns about the fire fire in this evening. But we can follow up with that. Yeah, I, I think that I would see if you could address whether or not the problem is responding, why they're narrowing, they're agreeing to narrow the road, now they can get two trucks. They might get trapped in there, and they won't be able to get out. So if the problem is responding with this, or whatever person there is, I think that. My opinion would be about the plan would I require the road to be all across the if that's what the plan is. Um, my concern is that the road is going to be narrow. Um, I think that the road is going to be narrow. Um, I think that the road is going to be narrow. I think that the road is going to be narrow. I think that the road is going to be narrow. I think that the road is going to be narrow. I think that the road is going to be narrow. I think that the road is going to be narrow
for this particular area is about the wetlands and the flooding. Um, one of the things you can prove is the history of this area um, is going to come set built on the other side in the same way. If all the neighbors on that side of East Street have experienced extreme flooding over the last decade because of it. And none of that has really been addressed. And then even on this summer, um, I just spoke to you about it, the sinkhole issue on, on that side of East Street, it, it had rained in wet spring, and we went into June when we were going to dry, and then you could hear water running through the storm rooms. So that's something we were going to try to address with uh, public works. It, to me, it's storm water running into the, into the storm range on the groundwater because it's so saturated. Now, I know that directly across the street from me is the adjacent properties to this. And one of the things um, I'm concerned about is you're talking about, like, I assume you're talking about how you can talk about to feed these homes. So, and then you're talking about Though that water being used as the sewage water actually going in the south. But what that tells me is if you're getting water from a different watershed bringing it into this property, and all of the leaching fields that are going to be in these seven holes is now you're distributing that water into the ground. So whatever water condition we had without the colors at, cutting it off and creating the actual geography of those from the center of that road toward the windows and toward these people's home, you're pitching that from, from each center line down towards it. So that alone is going to create additional floodwaters to these homes, to the residents. And the other part of that is you're taking all of the water from them that they're going to be purchasing for their homes and all the showers and all that is going to go to the ground. So I'm not sure if you've taken any of that, those numbers into consideration, but that is something that you really needs to be looked at and studied because this will have a negative impact on the people's li living in this in this area, especially between Peterson and um, in this particular road between the two cul-de-sacs. I think you really need to, because I know when they did the original cul-de-sac, they told us as neighbors it won't be an issue. And you can, and some of you might be here to talk about it, some could make it. Um, but I know that we've been at all the other meetings, and this was discussed. And at all the other meetings, there was no solution to the problem. They talked about well, maybe they'd have to go to city sewers. Um, I think that would be a minimum for what would have to happen. But you'd have to show engineering your numbers that why you're not, even though you're you're talking about pitching the, the road down, you're still splitting it and bringing the topography towards the weapons. I think that's just going to add to those neighbors' problems. Yeah, I think, I think Gigi, our engineer, has it prepared. So, so I want to start with the, uh, the, the first point, which was the two fire trucks coming down that road. Um, and it, it, the road, when it reaches these brick water standards, there's still ample, there's still ample room for two fire trucks to pass side by side in that location. Um, and I'll pass the microphone to Gigi in a moment to speak specifically about the storm water and the that we have on the way here. But you can see on your plans, um, we, I mean, we've designed a, a fully compliant storm water and the system that will have multiple inspections before, uh, before these houses will be built full in the brick water. Um, just to explain what a storm water management system is, that all the, all the water from the site stays on the site. Yeah. GG. Yeah. yeah, so 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 just so everyone knows, a stormwater management, yeah. Just before GG gets into the technical aspects of the foundation that you have asked for, a stormwater management plan is required in Mass Law. So when the developers like this, all of the stormwater that is on the site stays on the site and is managed on the site. What you're going to do is run on other sites in case they were. That's exactly what the stormwater management plan is designed. I was specifically talking about the septic system, which is not storm water. That's water that's being introduced to the groundwater system, and how that will affect the, you know, the, the actual gradient of the groundwater in that area. Yep, let's see. Um, let me just kind of saying, um, we're going to do the road. So, the road is built, I'm not going to go over the to the regulations. Yes. So the proposal is not clear, but what we put in the um, plan is submitted in March 10th, and then 
and then it would freeze, and kids could go up there and skate and have a good time themselves. But I don't understand, you know, where you come from. It, it, is the area you're talking about in Brockton or in East Bridgewater? It's Brockton, right, right on East Bridgewater line. So just behind our fence, it turns into Bridgewater. East Bridgewater. East Bridgewater. So you might tell us your address. 173, Southfield. Thank you. Did you want to say something? I mean, I think part of what we're proposing is, and part of the, what I think is some of the benefit of this project is a formal stormwater management system as opposed to you know, what you have now is a significant amount of impervious service. Surface uh, doesn't have any level of sophisticated draining mechanism. So, so uh, I think so. Well, this is a little breakdown. We have impervious service, impervious service, impervious service, impervious service, impervious
When was that built? When was Peterson have construction? In the last 12 years. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I'm going to say this bill improved the stormwater runoff, excess stormwater runoff in Brockton, and especially neighboring uh, abutters on uh, East Street, exactly abutters. It will improve the water. If they have any problem, it will either reduce the significantly or eliminate it. Because what they're doing here is taking all the impervious surface, which creates extra runoff, because it doesn't have room to infiltrate back to the ground, like it's supposed to, and we are taking all that excess run off the bridge water from a way of the ground. I'm not, I can't talk as questions about Peter Sedan and your specific situation, I'm unfortunate with it, um, but as far as this project is concerned, this is what we're proposing in a very, in very simple terms. Someone else? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go here first and then I'll be back. Okay. Good evening. My name is Patricia Crooker. I live at 42 Plain Street in Brockton. I have a couple of questions. From my understanding, approximately 8% of this project where building is going to take place is actually in East Bridgewater. Why don't you have access from East Bridgewater? Why? Somebody want to answer that? Um, I don't think there's a road. Is there, there's a road. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there is a road in the location that is that area. But you're going to rebuild that road. Why don't we build a road from East Bridgewater instead that would not be as long to access where you want to go? Yeah, I think it was supported. Do you want to answer that? Yeah, there just isn't access from, from East Bridge Road. There's no adjoining road that we could connect to. Um, the, the most efficient way to do it is, is to connect to East Bridge Water. Oh, I'm sorry, to connect to Brock. Um, this is probably the only thing that has a village on East Bridge Street and Brock and then on the right Any more? Yeah. Um, right now, we are planning on using water from Brockton, not necessarily sewage. Who is going to get the tax benefits from this? Is the city of Brockton going to get tax benefits, or are the taxes going to go to East Bridgewater because the majority of the properties are there? Yeah, sure. So, the tax benefits are all the municipal lines. You know, the, 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 the properties in Brockton pay taxes in Brockton, the properties in East Bridgewater pay taxes in East Bridgewater. But there's only two buildable lots in Brockton, but all the access is from Brockton. But you just the access is from Brockton. The two but lots in Brockton are not buildable. Oh, by the land by the, by the land court decision, it was agreed to by the planning board and um, the applicant, the carols, that the lots in Brockton were not buildable. That was something that was, was agreed to. Um, that determines the municipal water agreement, those details need to be worked out. This is a very multifaceted, many step project. We have no idea what that might look like. We don't even know what the city would entertain it. We call it level. But that is a process of negotiation between East Bridgewater, between Rockland. There are payments to compensate the, the town for the use of the water. You know, there's all sorts of considerations on how well it's used, and so on and so forth. So it's not as if the homes in East Bridgewater are going to get the water approved. If that's your concern, there will be payment for it. So the resources being used, there will be an analysis as to whether Brockton wants to give those resources up. Um, that's not right now to even answer those questions. The applicant needs to know that the plan is approved. Because you can't have a meaningful conversation with the city of Brockton saying we need water until we know how many, how many lots and buildable lots we have. We need water for. So you need to approve from the planning board at this stage to say, okay, we have seven lots. Well, now we can have a meaningful conversation on how much water that might be required, and then go through that process and have that conversation. 
Does that answer your question? Not really, but I, can, can I, I understand why you say you can't answer that, but I think it's a legitimate question. It's absolutely a legitimate question. It's just you can't have the whole project. All the decisions can be made at once. So that is true. But right now, you're saying that there are several, seven buildable lots in East Virginia. Correct. No buildable lots in Brockton. Correct. But all the access is going to be from Brockton, and the water is going to be from Brockton. Pay for this. They hope. They hope. They hope. Oh, I, I they that, hope. Is, that is a whole other conversation. Not a done deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah. If this gets approved, this is absolutely not a done deal. It's just a conversation moves on to the next. Oh, I understand that. Yeah. So, I hope that is it. Uh, Chris Allen, South Hill Drive. I was wondering how close to my property this building is going to be. Uh, we have woods all behind us right now. The kids love it. I have kids that want a whole bunch of stuff happening right behind the house. We need the wildlife displays. We've got we'll, uh, coyotes, deer, and that right now. Can how close to South Hill Drive would these back lots be? Do you have an idea if you do? Approximately a quarter of a mile. Approximately a quarter of a mile. Quarter of a mile. Thank you, Mr. Smith. So we're a quarter of a mile from the back of my property? See, yes, yes, it seems to be that case. Um, should we talk about access here? That there's still going to be access to the new
which is um, the section of the row in rock and that we wanted to use. Okay. Okay, so my comment is that was not included in what was posted on the website. How about that? Thank you. Someone else? You know what had to come. Uh, ball well, barrel, the uh, 149 Carol Ave, which is parallel. Uh, the question I have is you've said that there's no local lots in Brockton. So there's going to be no houses in Brockton. Brockton's going to be providing fire services. Providing what? Fire, fire police services, safety services. Yes, no. Brockton's going to be fire. Brockton's going to be providing ambulance services. They will be because, uh, trust me, East Bridgewater's on the other side of 18. That's where the fire station is. That's where the ambulance is coming out of. Who is going to be paving the road? I mean, excuse me, bombing the road in the winter. Enough room for us to get 
kind of loose in and out and prefer trucks, uh, depending on how far the road goes, depends on how many trucks can fit back there. Uh, but from a professional standpoint, I can't see a problem with any kind of emergency apparatus going up and down that road and being able to turn around and, and get out of it. Someone else? Here? Okay. Yeah. Did they answer the question who would plow the road? No, I had a, it's been asked in that. Yes. Did they say who's plowing the road? Uh, he said that Brock and Leary's council will direct for plowing the section of the Brock and Leary's council will direct plowing the section of the Brock and Leary's council. So how does the plow turn around? Yeah, that's not, can, can, can I clarify that? Sure. Yeah. That, 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 I, I think the responsibility of well, the question is, is it the point of view is when it needs to be replaced, who will replace it? So no, no, the city of Parker Plaza is not going to be able to plow turn to be some sort of agreement for the homeowners to plow, as is set for the landlord of the city of Parker So that would not be the case. I think from the point of view of the so I apologize if it's confusion. Do you have anything to add to that? Do you jump? Yeah, so much. Um, um, I was going to say that it would be um, to be the public roads of each town, the government of the board under the agreement, uh, or if um, this is what's seen as a great issue um, to the board, and it's going to be just sort of a way to feel the maintenance that will not go to the media. No, I don't know if they're asking questions. Okay, someone else? Come on, come on, clap on. Thank you, Sure, Jody Lee, I have busy high street. So I was just um, looking for a little clarification just with the plan so I understand it properly. I know a lot of the neighbors have concerns about the runoff and the flooding. But is what you're saying that this basin that you've created is going to take all of the runoff and flooding that may occur, or all of the runoff and used water from these lots and put it into that basin so it theoretically will not affect any of the land outside of your development? Absolutely. That's, that's exactly what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And would that have any effect on the surrounding area? Like, would it also take the water from the surrounding area as well and run into your basin? Or is that only going to be graded for just your area? I think it would actually be more helpful and less flooding in surrounding areas. And I guess in the, in the alternative for, I mean, I don't know what it would entail to get your sewage from Brockton, but if you go plug into Brockton sewage, I feel like that's a win-win. All of the residents would be happy because you're not going to have more water. They're going to be happy because there's not going to be any sewage that they're going, you know, that, um, Field is keeping up with their sewage, and Brock gets the money from because East Bridgewater would have to pay Brock for using our sewage. So I feel like that would be a, a win win all around. Sorry. All right, thank you. What? You want to take it? Thank you. Um, I couldn't be quite so. We're going to try to recap that question. about about. Um, does the stormwater? So just I'm just going to repeat the question because the technical question is a letter I didn't answer them. So I just does the, does the stormwater management plan prevent other stormwater from the surrounding adjacent parcels coming into the system? Not prevent, but is there a possibility that some additional water that's right now already now is be directed into your basement? Um, so you're talking about the area? Um, I'm talking about the residents on the surrounding areas that they experience flooding and they're concerned that they're going to have more flooding because of these holes here with that. So this property naturally slows down in south and northeast. That's why I was interested because that the variable points and the water um, goes and accumulates there. That's how it goes um, in a very simple way. Um, 
about the what's going to happen in the Brockman side um, is excess runoff, which happens because of the impervious services, is going to be um, mostly located behind these houses on the street. Over here, all the excess runoff will be located in the river. And it will be re-vegetated, so there will be some um, more erosion control. Um, and it will, any runoff will be natural. So runoff is unless there's a perfect surface under the roof or pavement. If you have sandy soils, you'll have, uh, if you have sandy soils and your neighbor has clay soils, you will have less excess water than probably that in the so it depends on uh, a lot of um, um, things to simplify to a very simple point, but in a summary, it will uh, so, so I think what we're saying is, is we can't say that it's going to solve the, all the stormwater management issues for that whole area of the street, but we can say is that it's not going to create new ones and that it's going to significantly reduce untreated water in the area created by permit service on the farm which I think is a significant benefit if you're saying you have, you have issues with stormwater runoff in your yard. Correct. I'd like to move that strong this to be with your perspective on um, the actual issue of water. Stormwater is kind of seeds in a crop to the story. I get that. That's a, that's an impact. What I'm talking about is the targeting of land in Brockton at 124, and there are those people down at 120. So you drop the real heat. That water will be good right now, run to the back of the Eastern Water property Charge it on the property. I get that. But you, so 
you refer to the elevations going from 122 to 120. Right. That's not septic water, though. So I was confused. Run, I that, that's going to run off to the natural area where it's running off now. So nothing's going to change. The ground water that's there that's saturating the Navy shot is not going to get better by putting a road. It's going to get worse. And if you put septic in it, it's going to even magnify their issues. That's a fact. I mean, respectfully, we disagree. I understand you're taking that as a fact, but we believe this project meets the requirements from the state. If it's not a fact, show me the engineering data that says it's not. Show me where it says that you putting septic in this ground will not increase the groundwater. Show me that, and I'll believe it. Um, so, the, the state of Massachusetts has uh, very intensive laws and regulations about the separation system. And they require four feet separation from high seas of water, which is not even a regular water, as high as it can go seasonally, you have to four feet apart from it. And the reason for that is because if you have four feet less than four feet, there's a single bombing effect. Which um, is a fact maybe we talking about that increases the level of storm and groundwater from the infiltration system, but that's why the septic systems are need to be built um, for people about highest seasonal groundwater elevation that you can get on that specific property. And indeed, there's a lot of stuff that is attached to the ground. So what you're suggesting is the seven separate systems that we're proposing. Your concern, and just as I'm going to try to address it, your concern is the amount of water that's coming into those separate systems is going to flow in the ground and increase the level of the ground. And my answer to you is under Massachusetts regulations, to build a separate system, we have two soil tests. We have to determine professionally that we have the highest possible ground level. We to what the technical energy? High seasonal ground. The high seasonal ground. We have to find that that is not where it is average, not where it is just kind of on every day, but the highest seasonal possible point. The bottom of our septic tank, septic system, cannot be four feet within four feet of that. So I said to you, I don't believe that seven septic systems are going to raise the groundwater in the air up four feet. So I think it just doesn't seem, from a gallon to close to the point, we're going to increase groundwater in four feet. That's why you see people that have elevated septic systems in their front yard, above their, above their front door. Yep. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, that's fine. That takes care of that property. But the property, what may need to happen, the neighbor that's affected that, by that, you might want to walk there to see if we can arrange you to walk their property with your shoes. And then you'll see where the groundwater level is. If you're walking, your feet are getting wet. You're in groundwater. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, we we want to have to see. Yeah. Because the difference between what's on the surface and what's on the ground. Because where you're building, where you're building, you're at a different elevation to where I'm speaking. Yeah. Their property is lower by two or four feet. So they're already four feet below where you're talking. And this groundwater is going to go like you say. It's not going to be four feet up. It's going to be down at the level. That's what's affecting the neighborhood. Groundwater in areas at the same level. Um, so these tests, once again, I know that most states in the United States are Massachusetts have very strict regulations on who can determine the high season groundwater. You have to take three or two to three years better tests to be able to do that, and then you need an image to design it. And these and you have to have um, municipal and new units. So all of these um, lots were created after um, Board of Health Region in Bridgewater fitness along with the certified soil engineer, uh, certified by Title V of the state of Massachusetts, got benefited and did these tests. So there's an incredible level of um, accountability when it's that is um, so if they were any really any unsuitable situations, these lots wouldn't be here. If we wouldn't be reported, because we're not going to build them.
And so that being said, we'd love the opportunity to come and see what it is you're talking about in your property. Um, and we have no objection to asking the city of Rock to tie in it. We'd, we'd be happy to, happy to propose that for the project. Mr. Brady? It's my name is Judy Jackson. I live very far in front of the beach in Frenzy. We moved there in 1960. We were the one and only house on that side of the street. Now all of this is built up. And I agree 100% with Jeff because every time you made a change, you cannot control groundwater. I don't care what anybody says. Groundwater is going to do what groundwater does. And we lived in that house for 40 years. We never had a summer. We have one now. Every time they go, we get water. My neighbors get water. Every other house, because there's a lot of shale in some places, other places there is. But it's absolutely right. You cannot control groundwater barbecue. What you tell me? That is not It's impossible. And I just feel that I'm very against it because of the water situation. Because all of this land that you're building on, from there, it comes all downhill. Guess where? It's uh, right down the back of my house and all my neighbors' houses. We found that out when they built the cars that have been in Avenue. So I'm sorry, I'm against it. But of course, we need to move on. Thank you. Thank you for voicing me. Thank you, Council. Uh, when was the last time you were on the job in Chicago? It's been, it's been a few years. Well, do you, do you know, are you aware they're trying to meet with the project officials to buy storage and get a shoreline in the East Bridgewater? I was unaware of that. Okay, so they met with the DPW Commission's vote well, because they've not yet met with the mayor to contact me and I have Project to bring it up. We were just talking this week about that because they're looking to develop some property in, on Route 18 south of uh, East Meadows. And, and I know that there is capacity because we got money to upgrade the sewer system several years ago along the way. And, and the council can correct me because I've been off the council for several years ago. I'm say that but most of the agreements with these towns, you have to buy both the water and the sewer. You can't just do one or the other. That's what they're going to try to meet with the mayor and any of the officials about it. So I, that's why I asked you because I didn't know if you were aware of that. They're trying to get a saw line from from these two. Uh, no, we'll line. certainly approach that topic because that seems like it would address a lot of the concern. that there wasn't going to be anything behind our houses. 
And my third thing is just a comment. Um, I'm sorry this person bought land that the only way you can act, access it is through Brockton, but when I make a bad investment, I have to eat it. And that's all. Thank you. So, thank you for the comments. Um, the distance from the homes on Quincy Street, I'm sorry, Quincy Street, um, will be at least 700 feet in the woods. Behind where the current building is now, and then, you know, I was out there today, I couldn't even see the building from the street. I was closer to the building than I am when you were to see the building. So it is well hidden through the vegetation. Um, in terms of the native species, that's a concern I have. I'm, I'm a very heavily involved in conservation. We are outside of the 100 foot wetlands buffer system. So, in terms of protecting um, you know, the, the sensitive areas, that we're not asking for any permission from the conservation commission to do something that any property owner would be able to do to that property. Which brings me to the closing one. As a landowner, we have, you know, people in a property, it's like you own property, my client owns property, we all have the right to do certain things with our property. Uh, there, there are many, many things that could be done on there, just as a property, just simply because the government decided to do it. We, they don't want to do that. They believe this is the best fit for the neighborhood. And, you know, when you say they make a bad investment, it's not a bad investment. I mean, there, there are things that could be done with the property. This makes the most sense for the neighborhood. Can I ask, such as, what are your other potentials? You, you, Perhaps you, you, that would be more agreeable to the community. You could construct a school, you could construct a church, you could construct. But you would still need permission from Brockton for access. No. By tomorrow, you could walk into the building tomorrow. It might be taking a bit of a little bit of this, but we would not be far from the truth. Just going to get a permit to do it. So, this is, we believe, this thing is the most sensitive thing. Don't want to get those other users. But you would still need our resources to do that. You would still need our resources to do that. Yeah, you could be built on the rock line. But you would still like need our resources for water and such. Well, there's a building in there now that would use resources for water. So mm -hmm. there is a connection. So, so. It doesn't mean that it's not really, that that's something. It's also like that. Um, and the resources, we will leave that question in the rest of the agency. There's some water and sewer materials that we're proposing that would require a whole other round of professionals and how to be making them inform decisions as whether it's a good decision to say they're wrong. It's not something we can give you in the lab. There'll be more permission, just as we're here tonight, having this conversation, we definitely will be more and get permission. This is just this stage of permission. Just the property values, and then there's the capital speaker, the homes that have been built there, and the yeah, so, so our, our plan uh, as our plan as proposed um, was to build seven four bedroom homes back there. Um, the, the distance from East Street, I think, will make it so that a butter would have a hard time even seeing those homes from the back of their properties. And those are homes that, when when you go to sell your houses as a butter, they'll be used as comps by your real estate agent. I think they'll be they'll be valuable brand new homes that really add to the character of that area of the city. Thank you. Absolutely. Now this is where the old Knights of Columbus used to be, yes, that's right? right. Yeah. So when well, they took down the Knights of Columbus, they were burned. Yeah. Well, after they burned, the amount of rats that came out of there that went through everybody's property, we had them in our backyard, they were in our grill. We were trapping they, them like crazy. They got into the house, and the people that we lived next to all had the same problem. There were rats in everybody's houses that had chewed through the door to get into the house and went in through the heating room. You're not a good neighbor. No, so all of those rats that are still in the woods there that you guys are gonna disperse are going somewhere. And they're probably gonna end up in all of our yards and in our houses. They were getting hit by cars on They were running over all over the place. You know, there were other animals killing them in the street from the front lawns and find dead rats everywhere. What year was this? Oh, like yeah. But still, this you go out there, there's rats that come from everywhere. You know, they're all over the place. We never had a problem before. We've been there yeah. 22 years. Yeah. 
But to open up your room and find a rat in there, or to get up in the morning and find that they chew through the house. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. I will say this, that problem is not going to go away as long as that building sits out in the field, dilapidated. Yeah, it's just a pile of work. Yeah, it's just that they're all, yeah, I think if anything is removed. Yeah, absolutely. I was writing down questions at Scott's today. Um, will you agree now to further subdivide the property? Yeah. You would? Yeah. And would you agree to only put in single-family homes? Yeah. And uh, seven four-bedroom homes will use about a million gallons of water a year. That's a lot of water. So you're looking for water and sewer and plowing and public safety from the city of Brockton. Right? Public safety? Yeah. 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 No matter how you slice it, if Brockton is fire and water and police are closer. Okay. What are we getting from all that? Well, the water we purchase through the year, so someone named Monty Arkham's water, should it not be set up as a good thing? Yeah, I'm going to pay taxes to the city of Rockham, as the city has the water. The air will be improved, it won't be made to want, it won't be put to the use of money offensive to some of the neighbors, which you can remember as a number of writing, and then you will have a process at the city table and address the city's decisions. Okay. And what we haven't talked about is Brockton gets all your subdivisions track, plus the Amazon and FedEx one, and all the other deliveries and such, the, the clean out the septic system if you don't have sewer to keep up, and so on and so forth. Another person on us, what are your thoughts? So, so we actually have a, a traffic study done in 2015 that we'll, we'll be submitting back to the planning board. An independent engineer um, after the traffic study on East Street and understanding the growth of seven four bedroom houses, uh, nine months total, including not the little arrival, including that would have a big extremely minimal impact on East Street. Of course, there will be some improved traffic in a couple of hours leaving in the morning, a couple of hours leaving in the afternoon, increased FedEx deliveries. But in the scheme and the scope of uh, the amount of traffic that already exists on East Street, it was determined by them to be negative. We'll be submitting that part right So you're giving us a four-year-old traffic study, five-year-old traffic study? Yeah. You're going to update it? Well, Spend we, some money? We can. Mm -hmm. we, we, we you probably know. should. But the purpose of studying the direction of the coming from the proposed proposal, which is a little bit concerning to take a look at and then I just submit it again. The problem is going to be used to some any development is going to have some of those different possible developments wouldn't even require constructing the road for our standards, and it's an access to the east, it gives us a new drive. So you can potentially have a situation where there's uses with realistically far higher amounts of For example, when the building is being used to function or something like that coming out, uh, that would provide for the higher impacts at first in the area that will visibly be proposed with seven single family homes well, I thank you all for coming. Thank you. And I just want to ask the group, based on what you've heard this evening and what you've read, perhaps seen on the city website, what neighbors would be in favor of this? Raise your hand. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you very much. I want to thank Rockton Community Schools and the custodian who received the San Sergio Prayer for making this possible. I, I want to thank the police officers who have been standing here with us this evening, keeping us safe. I want to thank all of you for coming this evening. Good night.